Hi, my name is Marcus Huskins, and welcome to this free video series, Studio One for Logic Pro users. So what I thought I would do in this series is we would take a look at Studio One, focusing specifically from a Logic Pro user's perspective. So kind of taking a look at Logic Pro features and then giving a uh, kind of like a comparison, uh, the similarities and differences on a feature by feature basis, hopefully enough to get you up and running and working within Studio One. All right, let's get started. So to start off with here, I have a Logic Pro session open. This is version 10.6.2, which at the time that I'm recording this video is the most recent version available. Now, with respect to the arrange window, a lot of similarities here. If we take a look at Logic, we have our transport, we have some different options here. We have our track header, we have the ability to input monitor, record enable, uh, mute, solo, we can adjust our panning, we can adjust our level. And then of course, we have our global tracks that can be available in Logic. So I know you're already familiar with this, so let's just hop over to Studio One and we'll take a look at kind of the equivalent setup. Okay. So first and foremost, I'm gonna start off with the view like this. Okay, well, one obvious difference is that we have a lot of this information that's on the top in Logic is on the bottom in Studio One. Not a huge deal, but just a slight difference. Now, if we take a look at the track header, if we have a track that's selected, this is pretty similar. We have the ability to mute, we can solo, we can record enable, or we can monitor enable. When we have the track, width or rather the track height higher, notice that we have some different options that become available within the drop down menu. So first and foremost, we have our inputs, we have some group settings. So if you have a group set up, you can add or remove tracks from the group. We have some layer settings that are available as well. But the main thing that I want to focus on here is the global track. So if we hover our cursor over this logo, notice we have global track visibility. So things that you would expect here, like for example, a marker track, uh, we have a ruler track, so we can have a secondary ruler. Maybe you want to work with frames or seconds visible. In addition to that, we have an arranger track, which is something different. We're going to get into this later on in the series. Uh, we also have a chord track. We have our time signature track, and we have our tempo track. So these are all things that should feel pretty familiar uh, with, the risk, with, with the exception of the arranger track and the chord track. Very familiar when compared to Logic. Now, one thing I want to point out, though, is in the default setup with Studio One and the track header width pulled all the way to the left, you have to click this global track visibility button, which gives you a pop-up menu, which allows you to either enable or disable certain uh, global tracks from view. If you hover your cursor right at the break here at the very beginning, notice we have this little icon, which allows us to adjust the track width. As you pull your track width out a little bit to the right, it will actually toggle or float every single one of these individually. This is the way that I prefer to work because it's a really quick and easy way to say, okay, I don't need to see this. I don't need to see this, this, or this. Maybe I just want to see my markers and my tempo. And that's good enough for me to get started and get working. So depending on how you want to work, we can do that either way. The next thing I want to take a look at is the inspector. So in Logic, we have our inspector, very easy. We click it based on whichever track is in focus. We will have information on this left side over here. We have basic track-based information uh, in terms of the levels, the panning, any plugins or sends that are on the track. And also we have some information with respect to the kind of the time stretching algorithms and also things like event gain and, and quantizing settings and whatnot. The one major difference though is in logic, you also see your main out at any given point of time. That's also always available to the right. In Studio One, it's a little bit different. The icon looks very similar. We can open up our inspector and then based on the track that we have selected, uh, this also works with, for example, the marker track. So right now, we only have two markers that are set in Studio One. If I go like this, you can see if I select the marker track, I have my start and my end marker. Tempo, I don't have anything there right now, but if I select an audio track, we have the basic same information. So for example, we have our fader that's available. Let me close our mixer for now. And in addition to that, any inserts or sends that we have. And if I adjust some of these settings, these are all dynamically adjustable windows. And as I pull this down, notice that a couple more items reveal themselves here. So this is very useful. For example, we have our different uh, algorithms that based on whether the drum is a, and you want it to be in percussive, or maybe you want it to be monophonic, or maybe you want it to be polyphonic, or maybe you want to use a tape resampler. 
that changes or rather unlinks the time and speed factor so you can change your tempo and do different things more much like a tape slowing down or speeding up uh, in addition to that we have our group settings or layer settings uh, the layers follows events and play overlaps this is something we're going to get into in a later video but we also have track delay and this is on a per track basis maybe this one i want to have set to like minus 10 milliseconds and this one could be in the other direction we can either mouse click and drag or we can enter these numbers in manually so this can be really really useful if you want to adjust the timing of things in a single click we can just enter things numerically like i said we also have the ability to solo mute record arm or monitor enable each one of these over here uh, another thing that we can do is we can adjust the channel mode so we can have a track be stereo with a stereo audio event and stereo or I could make it mono if I wanted it to just be mono. One really cool thing that I really love about Studio One is if we open up our mixer, this is kind of the same as clicking X in Logic. So if we hop over to Logic and I open up my mixer and I've got this set to dynamically readapt over here. We have all of our basic mixer settings in Studio One. It's referred to as the console. And we have a shortcut, which is F3, which does something very similar. If you click the wrench icon, there is a bunch of different options here that allow you to see different things. One of the things that I love is the input controls. So what this allows me to do in Studio One, let's solo this. Okay, there's our bass over here. Let's go over to the congas. I can adjust or trim the input over here as needed. And this is uh, between minus 24 and plus 24. And I can also invert the polarity on a channel by channel basis. And obviously if I have a mono track over here, then our channel polarity, we only have one of them. So this is something that's really useful in Studio One that I really, really use all the time. So if your console is closed, but your inspector is open, as long as you have that enabled in your console options, you also have the ability to do that from here. This for me is super useful when I'm loading virtual instruments and all the presets are too loud based on the way I gain stage. I'll pull up an instrument track and I'll just set this back to like minus 10. As soon as I find a preset that I like, what I'll do is I'll bring this back to zero and I'll trim the output of the actual preset to sit in line, usually leaving my fader at zero. Okay. So we have looked at the inspector, we've looked at the global tracks, we've looked at the console. A couple other things I want to talk about with the console. Studio One's console is dynamic in that it will readjust and resize and based on the size or the height that you have this set, you will either see more or less of these options. Another thing to point out is if you're using a Personas interface, then you also have channel controls, much like you'd be familiar with seeing in Logic if you're using uh, an Apogee interface. So for example, let me switch to input two. Notice I can disable or enable my phantom power and I can also adjust this, my preamp gain on this or single click and I can enter this directly within over here. And also we have some talkback options and we have the ability to set the output that our headphones are going to be following on our interface if we have the functionality in the interface that we're using. For the time being though, let's just take our audio device controls down and I like to adjust everything at this track height. We have two different track heights that we can work with or two different console behaviors. One is small, one is large. When you're in the small console behavior, notice we have this expand section and this will allow us to see our inserts and our sends on a per track basis. So I can expand any one of these and if there's any inserts or sends, that's something that I can see. We also have the ability to go to a large track height and when you're in a large track height, it's very similar. We have our inserts up top and our sends below, and these are dynamically adjustable as well. And if you have any Q sends that you're working with for headphone mixes, again, something we're gonna look about at later, these will be visible here as well. Now, there's one more option that we have in that let's stick with our large height and let's go to our narrow channel view. In this case, we see our different LED meters that are happening for these different ones over here. If we're in the large height. Generally speaking, I like to leave this in the small view. If I'm working on a single screen, I find it's really, really convenient. Okay, last but not least, let's take a look at the browsers. 
In Logic, we have a browser. We have a shortcut that we can open it. This is very similar in Studio One. You can search between loops, different files that you have installed on your system. You have different options to addition them. You can drag and drop them within the arrange window. It is the exact same in Studio One. Uh, in addition to that, let me hop back over to Logic for a second. If you're using their metadata tagging system where you can search by genres and different styles and stuff like that, this is also something that Studio One has. So I'm going to click the browser tab over here and notice that we have a section in loops. We have this magnifying glass. If we click this magnifying glass, we can automatically show the tags. So I could, for example, search for hip hop, Maybe I want to find drums. These are all the loops, the Studio One included content that we have now for all of these different loops. Now, a couple different options with respect to how we preview these loops. Notice over here, I have an option to play at song tempo. When this is enabled, Studio One will automatically conform any loops to play at your song tempo. Uh, and also we have a loop function. So when loop is enabled, if this is a loop, it'll just loop repeatedly. And this is of course something that you can play in conjunction with everything else. So let me just take all of this and pull it down a little bit. Again, selection based groups, just like we have in Logic where we can select a bunch of tracks together and we can perform a task and that will follow. So that's something that will feel very, very familiar. But if I was to play this now, 90 BPM, if I took something else in here, maybe I want to take this, get a drum mix, and I want to addition this. Let's stop for a second. I can just quite simply click the play at song tempo, go back to the very beginning. Maybe we'll scroll through to bar two. And then as long as play at song tempo is enabled, okay. If we want that loop to be enabled, I'm just going to enable this loop, and now this will continuously follow. Okay, I'm going to stop this, and I'm going to stop Studio One as well. Another thing I want to point out, I'm going to go to the very first tab over here, which is, where is it? It is going to be Files. So I'm just going to click this X or this magnifying glass to get rid of that metadata searching option, and I'm going to go to Files. Now. If you really like the Apple Loops and you like working with them, it's really easy to navigate. You go to your main files tab, which is the very first tab in your browser in the files section. Then you could actually navigate to your volumes, Macintosh HD. You could navigate to library, audio, find your Apple Loops, and then you could actually work with the exact same CAF files. They have all the tempo information and metadata embedded. So I'm looking at the exact same ones over here. So let's take a look at abandoned brass stabs. Okay, I don't want to loop and I want them to play at their original tempo. Okay, this is a good example. This one, I can see the tempo information here is 98 BPM. If I wanted to have this play with my production, okay, I can addition this against the production by just clicking play at song tempo. Okay, so let's say that I like that and I decide, okay, I wanna use that. It's very easy to just drag this in and then I can adjust this. Look, just by clicking here, I can see exactly where I'm bringing this in and it's going to bring it in on a brand new track. Another thing to point out is that Studio One has a really awesome ability. Let's go to song and let's just go, let's just go new song for a sec. If you take a look at this setting over here, stretch audio files to song tempo, this is a real awesome way to be able to mix and match different songs. So I'm gonna click cancel, let's go back to our song. What this means is that any file, as long as it has tempo information embedded, and even some that don't, any file that you drag in, it is automatically going to play within your timeline. Now, we can drop and drag and drop this right in. Here's our beat, or here's our loop that we just dragged in. Notice we have this little square over here. I can adjust the event gain, which is very similar to Logic in terms of being able to select an audio region and adjust the region-based gain over here. This is something that can be done in Studio One. We've got a couple different ways we can do this, but event gain allows you to very quickly and easily adjust this. Now in the bottom left of your section, anytime you select an audio event, whether it's a, one of these up here or a loop, 
Notice that it, ha it gives you information with respect to the start point, end point. It'll tell you the embedded file tempo. It'll tell you the gain. If you have any fade-ins that are created, it will tell you those fade levels and everything like that. So this is very, very similar to logic, and it's something that's very useful if you need to get some quick and accurate information. Uh, but like I said, one of the cool things is working with the browser, just drag and drop, everything will just work, and it's very easy to just duplicate this out if I wanted to play this across the entire production. Now I'm working with this section over here. Okay. One last thing I want to bring up, when we talk about the different menus that are available, or rather the ways that we can look at our screen in Studio One, Studio One is designed to be a single screen application. Now we have different views. For example, like I mentioned, we can enable our inspector, we can enable our console, we can open up our browser, and that's all well and good. But uh, with respect to having different views, like for example, if we double click the editor, or if we open up our console, any one of these views can be undocked from the single screen setup if you want. There's this little arrow that says detach. When we click that, now this is available as a standalone GUI interface that can either be moved to a separate screen altogether, or if you want, you can click this button over here and now you go into full screen mode. So any one of these, if ever you wanted to detach one of these, like I said, this goes with the console, and this also goes with the editor, or if we were working with uh, the MIDI editor, it would be the same. All you have to do is click this little arrow, which detaches, and then you're free to resize this as needed, anything you want to do. And of course, this will also respond to the key command. So if I toggle a key command to show hide my editor or to show hide my mixer, those will be available like this. Now, if I wanted to reattach this, I can just click the downward arrow, and this would now reattach or redock these external editors back into my single screen setup. So with Logic Pro, where you have screen sets and setting up different ways to work, uh, maybe you have a certain view that's your editor and a certain view that's your mixer and one that's your range, Studio One is very much a single screen program, which you can detach any of these elements and have them show up on an external monitor or just free to reposition them and move them as needed. Okay, so I think that pretty much wraps up this video. We covered a lot of ground here, but in the next video, we will dive into our IO labels and IO setup and getting yourself set up with your interface. So I'll catch you for more in the next video.